Apple's MacBook lineup is more confusing than ever, with five different models, each with multiple configuration options. But I do think that most people should only look at either the M1 Air, the M2 Air, or the M2 Pro. So here's how they compare and some mistakes to avoid. This video is sponsored by Dreamy Tech and their new Dreamy Bot D10 Plus Robot Vacuum and Mop the all-in-one solution to your cleaning needs. Featuring powerful suction, LiDAR navigation, self-emptying, and also mopping, there isn't much this robot vacuum cannot do. Check out the D10 Plus by using the link below. And now, back to the video. Design-wise, the M2 Air is the only one that uses Apple's newest design language. So that means a more rounded body and a notch. If you want a more traditional design, the M1 Air and the M2 Pro are the ones to go for. If you're a fan of multiple color options, the M2 Air offers four with the new Midnight and Starlight, while the M1 Air offers three with the M2 Pro offering two. The M2 Air is also the most portable one out of the three, but the difference is pretty minor, at least between the two Airs. So far, you might think that the M2 Air is the best choice in terms of the design, but there are a few things that you should keep in mind. Number one, the Midnight M2 Air will be the most most desired color option, so if that's the one you plan on getting, make sure you're quick. Number two, both the M1 Air and the M2 Pro have this underside belly, which makes them easier to grab when they're sitting flat on a table. And the M1 Air also has this wedge-shaped design that gets crazy thin towards the front, which combined with the underside portion gives the M1 Air the illusion that it is impossibly thin. I know, design is very subjective, so this is ultimately your choice. Uh, personally, I reckon I'd go with the Midnight M2 Air. The displays are pretty different too. The M1 Air is the worst here, as it's the dimmest at 400 nits compared to 500. The M2 MacBook Pro has the same 13.3 inch display size as the Air, it's just brighter, while the M2 Air has a significantly larger display at 13.6 inches. It is also a 10-bit panel, which can display over 1 billion colors. Um, this is like Apple's latest 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros as opposed to 16 million colors on the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 Pro. But I gotta be honest here, when I upgraded from my 13 inch to my new 14 inch MacBook Pro, I couldn't see any difference in terms of the colors. They all support the DCI-P3 color gamut, so if you're a photographer or a graphic designer, they would all be great for you. It's just that the Pro and the M2 Air would be slightly brighter and the M2 Air would be very slightly taller, offering you a tiny bit more vertical space. The keyboard and the trackpad are very good on all of these, with a great travel and an outstanding haptic response from the trackpad clips, but I do want to mention a couple of important things here. If you prefer having the largest trackpad, then that would be the M2 MacBook Pro. Uh, the M2 Airs is smaller, and the M1 Airs is even smaller. I personally had no issues with using the trackpad of the M1 Air though. Keyboard-wise, if you type a lot, the M1 Air might actually be the best choice here, as because of that wedge-shaped design, the keyboard is sitting at an angle, making it easier to type. The M2 Pro, however, is the only one that comes with a touch bar. Both Air models come with the default function keys. I do prefer the dedicated function keys myself, as the touch bar, guess what, constantly froze. But there were some apps in which I did find it quite useful, like in Photoshop, where I could change the brush size and the colors, that was quite cool. Now, if you do a lot of video calls, the M2 Air has a slightly better camera, as it's 1080p versus 720p, although I do think that Apple's just doing too much processing on these new 1080p sensors. Yeah, I don't know, they just don't look great at all, in my opinion. You know what else is important for when you're doing video calls? Uh, the microphones and uh, the speakers. Now, the microphones are actually more advanced on the M2 MacBook Pros, and same goes for the speakers, with the Pro featuring high dynamic range speakers compared to four regular speakers on the M2 Air and two regular speakers on the M1 Air. We will be doing a hands-on comparison when we get the M2 Air in the office next month, so do subscribe for that, but yeah, don't get me wrong, Apple has the best laptop speakers and the best mics in the industry, so I wouldn't be worried about the quality on any of them. Now, if you want the longest lasting machine, that would be the M2 MacBook Pro with a 20 hour battery life compared to 18 on both MacBook Airs. However, I think that the overall best battery choice is actually the M2 MacBook Air, and that's because it also has MagSafe, which frees up one of those two ports, and it also supports fast charging up to 50% in just 30 minutes with the 67 watt power adapter. Now, by default, you only get a 30 watt power adapter, but if you pay $20 extra or if you buy the higher end config of the MacBook Air, um, you get to pick between two better chargers a 35-watt one, which comes with collapsible pins, so it's awesome for traveling, 
uh, and two USB-C ports, which allow you to charge both your MacBook and your iPhone. And then the other choice is the 6711 that supports fast charging. The 13-inch M2 Pro does actually come with that same 67 watt charger by default, but it does not support fast charging. My personal choice is this 100 watt charger from Ugri. It has three USB-C ports and one USB-A, so you can fast charge both your MacBook Air and your iPhone, which require 87 watts in total. So you might have noticed a Ren in some of our recent shots. She's our fluffy little office dog. We also have entirely carpets, so how do we keep on top of this? Well, it's quite simple actually. We use the DreamyBot D10 Plus. This brilliant robot vacuum and mop looks after all of this for us, with its strong 4000 pascal suction, effectively cleaning up any Ren's hair and any dust it passes. With LiDAR navigation, it won't miss a corner as it maps you a full floor plan as it goes. You can then split it up into rooms and sections, letting you clean only a specific area if it needs it. It can also store multiple floor plans at the same time. After all of this, it even empties itself at its charging station, and thanks to Dual Boost technology, it's clean, quiet, and won't get blocked up. Ren loves it, so if you like the sound of all of this too, the Dreamy Body 10 Plus definitely seems the best all-around robot vacuum you can get in 2022. Check it out by using the link below. And now, back to the video. When it comes to the actual performance, all are outstanding options, especially if you're coming from an Intel MacBook Air. The base M1 Air was almost three times faster at exporting a demanding video project than the highest spec 2020 13-inch Intel MacBook Pro. The M2 chip is a fairly minor upgrade though over the M1. Apple is claiming up to a 1.4 time overall faster performance uh, on the M2 Air compared to the M1 Air, but that was actually on the 24 gigabyte of RAM model. The base model, especially the one with the binned 8-core GPU, should be a very small upgrade. The biggest improvement is in terms of ProRes encoding and decoding, which is up to three times faster thanks to the brand new dedicated media engines. But realistically, guys, even the M1 MacBook Air is more than good enough for most people. Uh, the M2 MacBook Pro does have an active cooling fan, which means that it can sustain workloads for a longer period of time. So if you export long video projects or you render some uh, complex 3D scenes, then the Pro would be a bit faster and a bit cooler. For example, the M1 MacBook Air took close to 12 minutes to export a 14 minute video project, while the M1 MacBook Pro took 11 minutes. So there was some improvement by having that fan just not as much as we expected with the previous M1 models at least. Now, I do believe that this MacBook Pro, the M2, uh, is able to draw more power, not only because it comes with a more powerful charger in the box, 67 watts versus 30 watts, but at the Apple event, um, they used a very interesting wording when they described the M2's GPU performance. M2 delivers up to 25% higher graphics performance at the same power level as M1, and up to 35% higher performance at its max. So I do think that this higher power level is found only in the MacBook Pro. In fact, I noticed that Apple claims that the M2 MacBook Pro offers 1.4 times better gaming performance over the M1 MacBook Pro, while the M2 MacBook Air only offers 1.3x over the M1 MacBook Air. If your workflow consists in keeping a ton of web pages and apps open, uh, then only the M2 Air and the M2 Pro can be configured with up to 24 gigabytes of RAM. And 24 would also be ideal if you want to future-proof your system. Uh, if not, 16 gigabytes is also a great option for most people. But the main thing to consider performance-wise, which is really my number one downside, and the reason why I'm not getting any of these MacBooks for myself, is that none of them support more than one external display. So if you need two displays or more, you need to go with a 14-inch or the 16-inch MacBook Pros. Okay, now that we went through what each of them offer, which one should you get and which one should you avoid? Well, personally, I think that most of you should stay away from the 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro. It's $100 more than the M2 Air, and it features an older design with a smaller display. Now, it does come with the 10-core GPU option by default. However, you can also upgrade the Air to that same 10-core GPU option. And in this case, they cost exactly the same. Unless you absolutely need those two extra hours of battery life and the improved speakers and the microphones, 
Just go with the M2 Air, as it's got a newer design that is thinner, lighter, with MagSafe, fast charging and that slightly taller display with thinner bezels. And besides, if you are a pro user and you start configuring the M2 MacBook Pro with more RAM and more storage, you'll end up very close in price to a 14-inch MacBook Pro, which has a significantly better display, a much better GPU and CPU performance and more ports. So now that we uh, cleared this out, should you go for the M1 MacBook Air or the M2 MacBook Air? Well, the M2 costs $200 more over the M1, and I do think that all the upgrades that you get over the M1 MacBook Air are definitely worth $200. But if you go on Amazon, there are constant offers and you can find it as low as $850, in which case, I honestly think that you should go for the M1 Air. If you do upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes, it would cost you $200, which would bring it to the same price as the M2 MacBook Air. However, if you do find a very good deal for the M1 Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM, maybe even from Apple's refurbished store, then I do think that this would be the best bang for the buck for any MacBook, which will last you for many, many years. And if you definitely want to get the M2 MacBook Air, um, upgrade the RAM to 16 gigabytes, especially if you plan on using this for a few more years. And also, if you can afford it, bump the storage to 512 gigabytes, which in total would cost you $1,600. So it won't be cheap. You can pick whichever of these two upgrades you need more. Definitely the RAM, that's the one that I would go for. In the UK, if you upgrade the Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage, it would only be 250 pounds less than the 14 inch Pro, which is a far more advanced machine. Overall, I would still recommend the base M1 Air to pretty much all of you. But yeah, definitely subscribe because we will be having hands-on coverage with these MacBooks and uh, stay tuned for more interesting uh, videos on everything new that Apple has announced. I'm Daniel, this means Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, sign me out. Cheers.